have been told that, uh, as the father of the bride that it's my responsibility to get up here, say some things about the happy couple, tell some stories about Eileen, and try to be a little bit funny. Uh, the funny part is problematic. <laughs> Eileen, in her um, efforts to uh, put the pressure on me, has obviously loaded the crowd with people for whom humor is a profession. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eileen. I love you! <laughs> Next month, she has me booked to uh, give a lecture on uh, sin and forgiveness in Vatican City. <laughs> Getting out of business. <laughs> we are here because I mean, to get married today. Yeah. Yeah. It's a miracle. <laughs> well, almost a miracle. Uh, of course, these are two uh, wonderful people who deserve to be happy and deserve to be happy together. But let's face it, they don't really fit the image of husband and wife. <laughs> Julian Ward Cleaver here. <laughs> for, uh, for Tim's uh, relatives and, and close friends, I ask you, did you ever try to figure out what kind of woman Tim would want to marry? <laughs> I bet it would be a, a strange collection of, uh, of characteristics. Uh, I guess I only had most of those characters. <laughs> but I, uh, I think uh, he probably never imagined that he would marry someone with her taste in music. <laughs> I'm not sorry, not music in, in movies. You've already heard some of this movie stuff, and come on. <laughs>
As my uh, Irish grandmother used to say, uh, as God made of me, man. And maybe that's what happened here. Okay. It's, it's still it's an extraordinary match. And look at them. Don't they, don't they make a wonderful couple? <laughs> this marriage is going to be quite an experience. <laughs> For one thing, as has already been pointed out, these are two of the funniest people in the world. <laughs> And there could be some records set for most laughter in a marriage. Uh, Tim's not even have to work at it. He's a naturally funny guy, and it doesn't take much to set up, I think. Mean. Most of you have seen it and heard it. That laugh is, is a, a unique signature of Eileen, and, and it carries. Uh, <laughs> And I can tell you that uh, in, in many, many years of living with her, it's uh, pretty clear to me that wherever I lean is, laughter is going to come pretty soon. It's, just a, it's almost a rule. It's as if she was born to, uh, to, to loosen people up. And, and she can loosen up amazing people. Then there's the sports angle. <laughs> Eileen has told me that the sports nuts are not common in the comedy business. That doesn't apply here. Uh, Eileen managed to find a Texan who is a Chicago Bulls fan. There's a rarity. Uh, so she did the obvious. She bought him the NBA uh, TV page. As my um, my Irish grandmother used to say, it's got made him a Here it is again. Uh, Eileen's favorite sport to watch is baseball, and her team is the White Sox. Yeah. And that, that dates back to uh, March of 1992, right a couple days after uh, Eileen's third birthday. Uh, we took a, uh, a family trip to uh, Sarasota, and we watched a couple of White Sox games. Uh, and it had been a long, cold winter, and for someone at Eileen's age, it must have seemed permanent. Probably couldn't remember anything else. And then suddenly, we're sitting in a ballpark, the sun is shining, it's warm, we're having a great time waiting for something to happen. But it occurred to me that Eileen might not know why we were there or what was going to happen, even though she had a big smile on her face. So I said, Eileen, do you know what this is? She didn't even hesitate. She said, this is fun. <laughs> and, and it's been that way ever since. Yeah, Eileen terrifically lights up whenever she walks into a stadium. Okay? Remember that, Timmy. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> I don't think he needs any help. <laughs> Going to baseball games has been a big part of our family life. Uh, for almost the whole time that Eileen lived with us, we had season tickets to the White Sox, and we would often go as a, as a family. And uh, Eileen pretty quickly le uh, learned about the various players on the White Sox, and learned to make just hilarious comments about it. <laughs> she also learned to dislike our enemies. <laughs> Especially the Cubs. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I think the term dislike is not strong enough. <laughs> okay. uh, and you never can tell what she's saying about these, about these things. When you come out as usual out, out of nowhere. Uh, one night in the summer, we decided to go to a, a weeknight game. And I came home from, uh, from work, and Eileen came out at, she was about seven. She came out and met me in the garage. And she was the cutest thing I could imagine. Okay, she had a big smile on her face, white socks gear on from head to toe, and she even had her baseball glove in her hand. Okay. I said, I need to look great. And you even had your mitt. And then the sweetest little girl in the world said, yeah, I'm going to catch a foul ball and throw it at a Yankee fan. <laughs>
And after a while, she noticed the cheerleaders on the sideline. And she asked Maureen what they were doing there. So Maureen explained it to her. And Eileen really showed her stuff at that point. She said, maybe someday I could play on a team that has cheerleaders cheering. <laughs> When I was in middle school, uh, a lot of the girls uh, went to things like dance lessons, not Eileen. Eileen spent her summers from middle school all the way through high school at the Second City in Chicago. Okay. She would take classes in improv and, uh, and, and in uh, comedy writing, and I thought it would blow over, but I guess it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she just loved it, especially improv. Sometimes she would, she would uh, audition for their uh, children's or teen uh, ensembles, and usually they'd take her, but if they didn't take her, it didn't bother her a bit. She, she understood the game. She, she knew what was going on. Uh, anyhow, all of that practice and work at developing skills paid off much later in the strangest possible way. She met Timmy doing improv. <laughs> or seemed to be upbeat and um, happy, uh, even if she wasn't. You know, she just had a, had, had a good attitude. Uh, and you could really tell if she was happy because she would start whistling. If she just started whistling for no reason, that was a good sign. And uh, often I'd hear her on the golf course. It's a peaceful place and she'd be happy. And then if her ball went in the sand trap, she'd get even happier. <laughs> sand made I mean happy. Who knows why? Where did she come from? <laughs> As a little girl, I think was very much into art, and uh, she would draw things. We'd find paper all around the uh, the house of I mean, making little drawings. Still, when, when she visits us for a little while afterwards, we still find these little drawings, uh, and. Uh, and she would not necessarily draw things that you would think she would draw. Well, I suppose you're not surprised that she would draw things that you would think she would draw. <laughs> uh, one time, when she was 11, we signed up for a parent junior golf tournament. And the night before we played, I gave her some golf balls and a magic marker and suggested that she mark the balls so that we would know which ones are out. Typically, you'll, you'll put some dots on there or, 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 or draw some, some lines, and uh, you'll know which ball is yours. She took it. Next morning, she gives me the ball, and on each ball, she had drawn a picture of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I said, Eileen, I gotta admit it, nobody else is gonna have this. <laughs> Where did she come from? <laughs> um, she's always been a festive person, and uh, often very creative about it. Uh, as a little girl, uh, any event that was just not uh, uh, normal, she would blow up into a really big deal, and, and, and she loved it. Uh, for a while, we suggested that her middle name should have been Valentine's Day. <laughs> I think mean, Valentine's Day O'Connell. Uh, if there was a, a special day around, uh, very often, like say St. Patrick's Day or New Year's Eve, she would throw a little family party for us. You know, she was just a little girl. And you know there would be food and music and and uh, decorations uh, and uh, maybe a game or two. And if she could think of an excuse, she would wear a costume. I mean, love costumes, and she still does. <laughs> In fact, I had an uncle who was a priest, retired priest, and uh, for his 80th birthday and again for his 81st, we uh, we threw big extended family parties to, uh, to, to celebrate. And uh, both times, Eileen showed up in Disney costumes. <laughs> she knew no one else would be wearing her costume, but there she was in a Disney costume. She's still famous for that in the family. <laughs> Where did she come from? <laughs> of course, Eileen is no longer a child. Maybe Sarah. <laughs> no, she's no longer a child, and that's good. She's turned into a responsible, mature, capable adult. You're laughing about that. 
a responsible, mature, uh, uh, capable adult, and more important, she's taught, turned into the, uh, the, the wonderful, very good person that we hoped that she would be. Uh, she um, couldn't have a better daughter. We couldn't have a better daughter. Uh, that, that uh, on the other hand, <laughs> a big part of our lean is still that delightful little girl. Okay? She hasn't lost it. It shows up all the time. And I don't think it'll ever go away. And I hope it'll never go away. And I think Timmy is counting on it never going away. <laughs> Uh, now I would like to welcome Tim to the family. We are so pleased to have him. Uh, Tim is a high quality person and a lot of fun. And uh, and we, um, I, I think we're going to have a, a, a wonderful life with them. Uh, and now I would like to uh, close with a toast. Eileen, Tim, have a great life. And, and stay young, you're good at it. <laughs> Okay. It looks like we might be moving on to the cake cutting. Is that